Welcome back kindergartners. Today what we're going to do is make a picture that looks just like this one. Um, we just got done looking at a PowerPoint and talking about two artists. One of them was Mark Rothko, let's say his name together, and Vasali Kandinsky, let's say his name together. That's right, and those two artists have a great influence on what we're doing today. As we remember, Mark Rothko used lots of color and liked to think about how color interacted with one another so that if you overlap different colors on top of each other or put them next to each other, they're going to kind of influence how they look and they're going to change depending on what they're next to. And Kandinsky also was really interested in color and he liked to put colors next to and on top of each other as well. And he did ones that were the circles if you remember and Rothko did the ones that were squares so we're kind of combining the two artists in this project. Other things we're going to talk today about are the primary colors and as you remember the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And we're going to use those three colors today in our picture, as you can see from my example. Next, we're going to remind you what a collage is. A collage is when you make a picture out of cutting up other little smaller pieces of paper and gluing them all together to make something completely different. Make a different picture than you started with. We're also going to be looking at our basic shapes today. Today we're going to be working mostly with squares and maybe some rectangles. Okay. And last but not least, something that makes this project what it is, is overlapping. That's when you put one thing on top of another. And today we're going to do that multiple times and we're going to kind of be making a pattern. Um, not like a regular pattern, but kind of a, a pattern out of just overlapping colors. So what you're going to need to start with, you're going to need your scissors, you're going to need a glue bottle, you're going to need a gray piece of paper like this, and you're going to need some two inch squares of color. You're going to have to start with six pieces, two of each color, and then you're going to arrange them on your paper yourself. Now, mine, I arranged them yellow, red, blue, and blue, yellow, red. You can arrange them any way you want, but let's try not to have the same color next to each other. So for example, if I put the blue over here and the red here, and then if I put a yellow here and a blue and then a red and a yellow, so none of them are next to their own color. Okay, so here's our beginning. I want you to take your six squares and I want you to glue them down kind of like that. Now, however you do your colors, however you organize them is your own artistic choice. Okay, but you have to have six and I want them kind of spaced out like that. And then with your tap and glue bottle, remember there's a little button right up here at the top and if I squeeze as hard as I possibly can, nothing's going to come out. I have to push that button in to turn it on and to push the button in, I push down on the table and squeeze push down and make bunny hops. One, two, three, four. Okay, then flip that piece over. Okay, bunny hops. One, two, three, four. Flip it over. And notice how I've got the edges of my squares parallel to the edges of my paper. Okay, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. And flip that over. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. And then flip that over. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. Flip it over. Bunny hop bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, and flip it over. So I've got six squares glued down like that. When you have your six squares glued down, give me a thumbs up so I know that you're ready. Okay, now what we're gonna do is add colors on top. You should still have more squares sitting at your table. And in order to make 
the composition right, we're going to have to start overlapping. So if you see here, I've got yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. I could probably put a little red piece on top and I would have a pattern repeating coming kind of up in the pattern, if that makes sense. So I've got red, yellow, blue, red. And I'm going to kind of overlap those colors as we go. Now, you might have some other different thing. You might want to start on a red one, so you're kind of following with me as far as the colors go. Or if you want to start on another one, that's fine. As long as you keep a pattern and you don't have the same color right on top of each other. Like I don't have two yellows sitting on top of each other. Or I don't have two blues sitting on top of each other. Because then it doesn't make it, you can't see it as well. Okay, so I'm going to start with my red here and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim the edge once and I'm going to trim the edge twice. And that's going to give me a little smaller square. So we're talking about sizes of things, how big one thing is and how small something can be. So we're talking about sizes of our shapes. So there's a, a blue square. Don't glue it down yet. Then I'm going to take yellow and I'm going to trim a little more off here. Just a straight line, straight line, and I should have a smaller square. You want to make it smaller than your first one. And if you want it to be a little rectangular rather than a perfect square, you can do that. Okay, and now I'm going to take the next red one here, and I'm going to cut it even smaller. This one I'm, I think I'm going to cut all the way in half, and then make it a square. See how that is? Good, and I kind of like that one there. So I'm back up to my red. Now I can probably use my scrap of blue here and trim this little scrap of blue and put that on top. And then we'll go back to yellow since that's the next color in my pattern. All right, and I'm gonna just use a scrap, my leftover scrap there. And there we go, we've got our little stacked up Kandinsky Rothko-like color. Then what you're going to do, when you get that done, give me a thumbs up so I know you're ready. Good. Now you're going to take your whole stack and watch how I do this. I'm going to flip it upside down. Okay. Flipped it upside down. They're all hiding underneath there. Then I'm just going to do bunny hops. One, two, three, four bunny hops. Flip it over and you want to align it so that you can still see a border almost all the way around. Then you've got your next paper just sitting right there, perfect. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. Okay, great, now flip that one over and you could align it any way that you want. You could have it up to the top, down to the bottom, off to the side, whatever you like. The next one, do my bunny hops and flip it over. My next one, I can probably only fit two bunny hops on this one because it's so small. Flip this over. And my last one, you can hardly see it. There it is. Probably get with one bunny hop on there. And flip that over. Okay, now I've got that piece all the way done. Now what we're going to do is you're going to do that one, two, three, four, five more times. But you're going to have to change the pattern around. See, I, since I started with yellow here, I'm going to need to do blue, red, yellow, whoops, and then go back to blue and red. So I'm going to continue with the rest of my patterns now. Trim the edge. Trim the edge. Trim. Trim. Trim in half. Use a scrap of blue and a little scrap of red to finish off with. OK, 
Okay. Now, when you get yours finished, give me a thumbs up so I know that you're ready. Good. Now what we're going to do is, well, same thing. Glue it all together. Flip the whole stack over. Take your glue bottle and start your bunny hops. One, two, three, four. Flip it over. And I'm going to kind of tilt mine to the side a little bit like that. So it has some movement and dynamic feel to it. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. Flip this one over. I'm going to kind of tilt it back the other way. Bunny hop on my other, my next piece. Flip it over. Bunny hop on my last piece. Or sorry, I have two more pieces. My second to the last piece. And now my last piece. Okay, now I'm gonna continue on. Here's my first blue one. I'm gonna start and then do red, yellow, blue, and back to red again. So here we go, starting off, take your red, Trim the edges. Next to yellow. So again, we are making sure that we're thinking about size of our shapes. We're thinking about how the shapes interact with one another because sometimes we need a big shape and sometimes we need a medium shape and sometimes we need a small shape. And sometimes we need shapes that are in between. So make sure that your shapes look nice together and work nice together in your composition. Okay, so here's my next one. And there we go, we're back to the blue. Now on to the red. I'm going to use some of my scraps here and just cut a little teeny uh, rectangle. And our last color is yellow. I think I can get away with a little scrap left from my leftover pile. See I've got this big leftover pile over here. Okay, So you can have a little leftover pile sitting right next to you and you can share your leftovers with your neighbor. That's a good thing to do. And so there we go. We've got my six colors. My blue, red, blue, yellow, blue, red, yellow. So we've got them overlapping. Again, take your papers, all of them, and flip them over and then start your bunny hopping. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. Flip it over. And again, I'm gonna tilt mine this way this time a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna get to yellow. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. And flip this over. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. Flip it over. my red one, probably just one little bunny hop on there. And my last yellow one here. Good, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna finish that. Okay, get all three of the top row done. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Good, now that you've got all three of those done and we know how the process goes, you have the pattern in front of you and you have the overlapping in front of you. Now you have three more to go. You're gonna work on those three by yourself. I'm gonna work up here in front of the room, but I want you to be working by yourself, working quietly, sharing with your table partners. Okay, and I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna work.
So, in conclusion, we learned about two artists today. We learned about R Mark Rothko and Vasali Kandinsky, who liked to overlap colors to create different effects. And you can see with our final example here, the way that we've tilted some of them, the way that we've overlapped them, create a really unique, fun, individual feel. So we also learned about and reviewed the primary colors, which are, as you remember, red, yellow, and blue. Then we talked about collage, and collage is any time you're cutting up the paper and gluing it down together to make a completely different picture, just like we did today with our collage. And today we used some of the basic shapes. We used squares and rectangles mostly. Okay, And our last but not least was overlapping. Overlapping was really important today. All of those little shapes that we were overlapping, um, on one on top of the other, made a really big difference because without that, um, we wouldn't have the cool picture that we have at the end because the overlapping really makes it what it is. And the last thing is size. We did talk a lot about size and really see how size works. Size being that some things are bigger and some things can be smaller and depending on how the bigger ones lay on top of the smaller ones or the smaller ones lay on top of the bigger ones it is going to influence and change how our picture looks so size can be a very important part of art class and that's how you make a uh, Rothko Kandinsky shape collage <laughs>